Scribble, Steve can remotely instruct by being light and entertaining. Shadow and light. Hi there, I'm Steve Breen, the editorial cartoonist for the San Diego Union Tribune, and I'm here in my little home studio, and we are going to do another episode of Scribble today, where we will focus on light and shadow, and how it could make your drawings come to life. Now here's a little drawing that I did a couple years ago, and it's just done with colored pencil on Bristol board, and it's a fox looking at a firefly inside a bottle. I'm not even sure why I did this. I think it was from a children's book that I was working on at the time that never went anywhere, never got published. But anyway, I kind of like this drawing. So I'm showing it as an example of how light and shadow and an understanding of light and shadow can really enhance a drawing and kind of make the, um, it could increase the drama of, of a piece of art. It could add form and it could add depth. And it's incredibly useful for storytelling. Now, the first thing to think about when you're doing an illustration incorporating light and shadow is uh, the light source, okay? So inspired by my firefly, firefly drawing that I showed earlier, I've drawn a little happy firefly here, and he is casting light on this box, okay? So the light is coming in this direction like this. See? And what we'll do is we will shadow the box accordingly. So let me get a soft pastel. Um, of course, the harder you press on your pencil, the darker your value will be. This is the dark side of the box because it's opposite the light, right? It's pretty self-explanatory. You're probably better at adding shadows to your drawings than you think you are. You just haven't thought about it before. Now this side of the box right here is going to still be gray, though not as gray, because it's going to have a little light from over here, from some of the ambient light sources on its surface, okay? This top surface right here will be closest or most directly affected by the firefly, so it's, it's gonna be left white. Then the shadows would go something like this. And the closer that shadow is to the object, the darker it will be. Okay. So we could fade this shadow a little bit right here. Yes. Oh, there's my uh, little one uh, interrupting. Just one sec. What's that? Oh, you found it. Okay, you can have that. You can have it. <laughs> okay, so before we were so cutely interrupted, we were talking about the shadow on the tabletop from this box. And the further away from the box we get, the more light falls on the shadow. So we could kind of blend it like this. Uh, and there's a rough uh, shadowed box. Now, let's look at a sphere. So a sphere would look something like this with a light source up on top. Yes, my sweet. Working at home obviously comes with several interruptions throughout the day. 
that's okay. We continue. So, a sphere. A sphere would cast a shadow on a tabletop like this, a flat oval. If the light source is above like this, right? Okay. And the shadow would extend to To the to the the parallel lines or not, not parallel the div divergent lines from the light source coming down like this. And then the bottom half of the sphere would be in shadow. this and then you could take time to blend it up to the very light portion depending on how much pressure you add to your pencil you get nice dark values if you press hard like this and then interestingly if if this was at all smooth this ball it would get light reflected from this surface right here up on the ball which would be kind of a secondary light source so here's your first light source the, the the firefly but it would also get this reflected light from down here okay and it would it would uh, present itself in the form of this lightness on the sides here of the ball you see so this would be the, the kind of the heavier core shadow right in here. Down here, since the shadow of the ball is, is um, so intense down here, you wouldn't have as much because it's not reflecting up. I think that's called an ocular shadow. But anyway, That's if the light source were on top. Now, if the light source were over here on the left, it would look a little bit something like this. A longer flat oval coming off to the right side. And then this back portion would be shaded. And if we have more time, you could get a nice blend on the pencil, but we're trying to kind of do things quickly. Okay. And if the, uh, if the ball were made out of something hard, like uh, for instance, plastic or metal, you could add You could add uh, highlights. So there would be a highlight right there uh, from the Firefly's light. Okay. Some simple shading exercises that you can work on. So all great artists understand how light and shadow affects their artwork. That was the case with the masters in the days of the Renaissance, and uh, it's still uh, true today with uh, animators working in Hollywood. Check out this piece of animation. Uh, look how great the artists made the uh, light fall on these central figures here, but also notice the shelves in the background, how they're faded because they have more light on them. They're exposed to more light. But the things in the foreground, like this ballerina here and these objects hanging up in the top right, how they're darker, 
because they're in the they're foreground. Notice the way the light source is over here on the left and it's casting light on the carousel and these figures in a really, really warm and fun way. So I thought we'd close out the segment by drawing a metaphor of something we're all talking about, which is the light at the end of the tunnel. So I've drawn uh, this girl here and she is approaching this light source, which would be the end of the tunnel. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a nice base gray around this part of the drawing. Okay. Like so. And again, I'm kind of using the side of my pencil, not the tip. There she is, walking towards the light, coming out of the shadows, out of the darkness, like we all hope to be soon. And she will have a shadow on her. Let's bring our pencil size down a little bit. So here's from her left foot, and then here's shadow from her right foot. See, if the light source is right there, it's coming this way on her. It's always good to get, give everything a, a, a base color or a base tone, and then you could either darken it or add highlights to it as you go, depending on how much time you have. We're trying to do this quickly here. So you see that even this little bit of shading that I've given this drawing so far has kind of brought it to life. And it makes it a little more three-dimensional, doesn't it? And then the more contrast you add between the light and the dark, the more dramatic it is and the more pleasing it is to look at. So we would add darkness around these edges like this. There's some bumps in the cave or the tunnel from which our girl is emerging. And there we have it. We could spend an infinite amount of time working on this tunnel, but for our purposes, I'd say that's decent. This has been another episode of Scribble. Steve Green working at home with uh, his kids all around. We will be back next week. But in the meantime, if you have a drawing with light and shadow you want to share with us, send it to me at steve.breen at sduniontribune.com. Take care. See you next time.